This is a TV6 sports special presentation. John McGinnis, a hockey legend. Brought to you in part by the Merchants and Miners Bank of Calumet. These local Seiko dealers. And these Armstrong ceiling dealers. Tonight's host is Steve Violetta, and we will continue with the program after these commercial messages. 26 years ago that John McInnes left the business world and journeyed north to Houghton to replace Al Renfrew as the head coach of Michigan Tech's hockey program. Three NCAA titles, seven WCHA championships, and 555 wins later, college hockey's winningest coach has become John McInnes, Husky hockey fan. And it's been quite a career in the sport for the young Toronto boy who got into hockey as a goaltender. Well, it was a neighborhood team, and uh, at, in those days, Minor Bantam was the uh, lowest age level. And uh, they needed a goaltender, and uh, nobody wanted to play goal, and I was the youngest. I think I was eight that year, and uh, they stuck me in the net, and I never did get out. Uh, actually, my parents were really not involved in sport, and I think in those days... Uh, I believe our team throughout my amateur hockey, maybe we only had one father that followed us around. We were kind of on our own, and uh, we had an excellent coach, and uh, that's the way we played. Parents encourage you, though, your parents? Well, they never discouraged me. I don't think they were one way or the other. In fact, uh, I don't think they really knew what a hockey puck was. But John did. Following normal childhood hockey progression, he went through minor, bantam, bantam, and midget, then skipped juvenile to play three years of junior. And then from that point, I went to college hockey. And basically the only reason, uh, as an 18-year-old, I had had a fling at professional hockey, and I was found wanting and uh, went back to junior hockey and finished my education in high school in Toronto. And at that point, there was a young fellow in the neighborhood that had just graduated from Michigan. And he had played hockey, and uh, he knew the three of us, Ross Smith and uh, Al Renfrew, of course, who was a former coach at Michigan and, uh, and myself. And uh, he uh, said, why don't you go over to Ann Arbor and uh, uh, give it a fling. Uh, college hockey is a good thing, and that's how we ended up there. The first year that I was there, which was 45-46 season, was uh, Vic Heiliger's second year there. And uh, we were totally a freshman class. Uh, the year before, they had a few seniors, and the record was not good. And, and Vic decided to uh, clear house and start all over again. And so the year that I started in 45-46, we were all freshmen except one young man. The first year at Michigan, of course, we were, uh, uh, I guess you'd call Western champions. Uh, there were only uh, four schools involved, Michigan Tech, uh, University of Minnesota, and Colorado College. So most of our games were played against senior teams and junior teams. But in any event, after that year, uh, I then went to the International League and I played in the International League, uh, sponsored by the Red Wings for three years. Then I went back in 1949-1950 to play college hockey again. So the rules were a lot different than they are today. Indeed, the rules were different then. John was the first junior B player ever signed by Boston in 1943. And I went to camp with them, and unfortunately, I guess, uh, for my pro career, I uh, cracked an ankle in camp. And so they sent me back to junior, and I stayed in junior that year. And then uh, they found out I was a diabetic and dropped me. And Cleveland picked me up. And the uh, interesting thing was that Cleveland were training in Ann Arbor the same year I was planning to go there. So I went to camp with the Cleveland Barons and uh, got beat out, just beat out, by a fellow named John Kiskan. And nobody knows who John Kiskan was, but he had many great years in the NHL and many great years in the American League, and that was Johnny Bauer. John would later serve as a practice goalie for the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, if there was an injury on either team, you had to go into the net, whether it was uh, Toronto or Detroit. You just sat in the stands, and, and I did that off and on for one year. And then, of course, uh, uh, if... There was a real serious uh, injury with a goaltender. They would go to Omaha or Indianapolis and bring up their second string goaltender. You were just kind of a, st a stopgap for an immediate situation, immediate problem. The Red Wings must have appreciated John's effort. 
because Jack Adams of the Detroit hockey team sponsored him throughout college. When I finished playing at Michigan in 1950, uh, we sat down and had a talk, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to turn pro, and I said, well, I'm entertaining thoughts of it, but uh, how far can I go? He said, about as low as you could in the minor pros. And so with that advice, I knew that I had to get out of hockey. But not for too long. In six years, John was, among other things, the assistant pro manager for the Michigan Ice Rink and also a purchasing agent for the Kaiser Frazier Automobile Company. But he stayed close to hockey as the director of the junior program in Ann Arbor at this time. He now has had two trophies instituted in his name by the American Amateur Hockey Association. How John went from there to the only coaching job he'd ever have will be our subject when we come back. Childhood friend and college hockey teammate Al Renfrew recommended John for the job as the head coach at Tech when he left for North Dakota. And uh, in those days, uh, I guess that this was a place that you came to coach and get your experience and got out of. And I turned him down in June, and uh, fortunately for my uh, situation, they came back to me in August when they couldn't find anybody. And I accepted at that point, and uh, that was the start of my uh, coaching career. How have some of your coaching styles changed over the years? Oh, I hope I have uh, adapted to the, uh, the change in lifestyle and that. Uh, as I said, I'm a conservative person, and, and some things are tough to change. But I think if you're, uh, you know, you're going to continue, you have to appreciate the styles of the young men that you're coaching. And this is something that, uh, uh, oh, reluctantly I've done, but I think I've been able to do it. And the thing that has, uh, I guess, changed my profession a little bit that I feel is that the players that we've had in the last five years uh, treat the game differently than the players for 20 years before that. Uh, they seem to be all so serious, and uh, this disturbs me a little bit. Now, where they got it in their youth uh, when hockey becomes serious as a peewee or a mite, and they carry this through, but they don't really seem to enjoy the game or and get the emotions out of the game that they really should. I think that John has been able to change over the 26 years he's had to change not only the type of player that comes into this program, the different backgrounds and the different uh, affluent type society uh, that kids come from now as opposed to when he first started, he has adjusted to those type of people. And in the same, uh, in the same vein, he is, he's adjusted to the new style of hockey and more diagrams and more technical uh, more of a technical game now and he has adjusted to all of those things. Well I think he's a lot more relaxed now, uh, a lot more comfortable with his players. I think he's probably learned uh, just as much from the guys that have played under him as, as we all have from him. Uh, I would say the main thing is he seems to be more relaxed and uh, he's still a disciplinarian and still uh, comes down on you hard when you get out of line and that sort of stuff and I think his main thing is that Everybody that comes here uh, ends up leaving as a man. More offensive, more offensive mainly. When I compare hockey when I played here, we were very, very defensive. Uh, now it's wide open, offensive type of game. And that's the type of game that's evolving nowadays, too. The impact of John McInnes on college hockey is chronicled in the record books. But his impact on the 18 and 19 year olds who come to Tech not only to play hockey, but also to grow into an adult cannot be measured. Former Olympic goaltender and current assistant coach, Jim Warden. It goes back to the 1974 playoffs when we were behind Michigan State going uh, in the final playoff. We lost 8-6 to six the first game. It was right here. And I was a sophomore at the time, and uh, I didn't know whether I was going to be playing in such a big situation, and he decided to put me in. And we ended up winning the game 6-2 to two, uh, in the last couple minutes, uh, you know, for total goals. And he came right up to me and afterwards and shook my hand and he said, uh, congratulations, Jim, you finally become a man. And uh, that forever will stick out in my mind. Uh, just uh, we had our differences at my first two years. And uh, you know, I kind of all put it in perspective that, that one moment. And then I came back the next year and 
you know, with the team we had, and, and I played pretty well, and he gave me the opportunity. Uh, we ended up winning the NCAAs uh, that year, and I, I think it goes back. My confidence sh just shot up just like that when he said that to me, and uh, that was really a big moment in my life, really, Steve. The last year that I was there, the championship year, everything went so smooth. We were so confident uh, in, in the team that we had, and, of course, we were confident in John, and it was just a, a good feel. I think we felt disappointed that the previous two years that I was there that we didn't win. We had gotten to the final game and got beat by Denver in my sophomore year, and in junior year we didn't make it at all. And in my senior year, going ahead and winning it, and, you know, we wanted to win it for ourselves, but we also wanted to win it for John. Which championship meant the most the last time? You said the first one, just because it was the first one. Well, I think it still does. Uh, and, of course, the last one was important because it had been 10 years from 65 to 75, and uh, people and myself were beginning to doubt whether we could make it again, even though we had been to the NCAA quite a few times. What kept you at Tech for 26 years? I guess because I'm basically a conservative person, and uh, we, my family liked it here, and uh, I was proud of the university. I didn't uh, feel bad about going out and selling a young man to come here and getting an education. Uh, the fact that a lot of schools, hockey is not the number one sport, and it is here. Uh, and I guess just the general area. Uh, I was satisfied to be at Tech and to start and end my career here. Did you ever seriously think about either another pro or a college offer? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, as far as the pros, I don't think that we got down to a one-on-one -on -one situation. I was considered several times. But fortunately, I had several players in the pros. One was Al Carlander, and he just told me not to go near it. And, of course, sensing it from a, a viewpoint away from the game, uh, I did really not want anything where I could not dictate my own situation, where somebody else was going to call the shots. And uh, so coaching really never appealed to me on the NHL level because I knew there was always a general manager and owner that was doing something contrary to maybe what the coach wanted done. If there's any one single thing about Husky hockey that makes John the proudest, it's the success of the program off the ice. Well, I, I don't think there's any question about that. I don't even have to reflect on that. I think to look back at the, the players that have graduated and what a lot of them are doing and the success that they've achieved. And if uh, the little part that I had in bringing them here, if that gave them a stepping stone, then I think that that's what what's gives me the most pride. He was a very strict disciplinarian, and you knew that you had to uh, do the job both in the classroom and on the ice and represent yourself uh, the way that, in a way that he could be proud of you. And I think that uh, uh, that's probably the biggest impression that you would have as a player. I was scared stiff when I was a player. I just didn't want wanted to uh, make a mistake or anything like that. Not to say he's an overpowering person or anything like that. But the opposite end of it is when I'm uh, coaching with with John, he uh, makes me do, lets me do the things I want to do. And I guess he just tries to develop those certain characteristics uh, in your personality to develop a game pro program. So like he, you know, he's a good friend to you and. Uh, he makes you organize quite well, but as a player, you know, he, may, he got the best out of you, and he, he scared you. He scared you. No, I'm not really a holler type guy. I, uh, I can holler and do. Um, no, I don't, uh, I don't think so. I, what I try to do is I try to give them uh, goals uh, and to work, and I think that the main thing that I've been able to ch succeed is the fact that we've been fairly consistent. But unfortunately, because maybe I'm not the holler guy, I think that our percentage of NCAA championships does not hold true with the rest of our champions, uh, championships. And uh, maybe that's my fault and nobody else's. I believe that you should play the game up to your ability and play as well as you can and let the chips fall where they may. A win to me isn't that important and never has been. Uh, in fact, I have given my team uh, many times uh, a verbal abuse after a game, after a win, and the opposite after a loss, uh, simply because when I, when I measure my team against the opponent, 
if they have performed hard and, hard and well and within our system, whether they win or lose, it's not that important to me. Through the three years, four years that I was there, uh, um, you know, try to make a big deal out of any one game. And, and I like that. I didn't think that we should play any special, any different in, in a final game for the NCAA than we did the first game of the season on the road or at home, whatever. When it comes to all this publicity stuff, college hockey's winningest coach claims he's actually shy. Like when all the hoopla was going down as John approached the all-time win record of 502. I think the thing that uh, I was sick and tired of it at that time because uh, I think we went maybe two or three weeks where I could have broken the record and that's all that was written about the team. And that was very unfair to the team. So I was just praying that it was going to happen that night, not for my sake, but just to get the people off our backs. John McInnes has coached his last Michigan Tech hockey game. A new coach was named yesterday. John will remain at the university as a physical education professor. Life after hockey for him and the future of the program itself when we return. Michigan Tech played hockey here at D Stadium for many, many seasons. After the move to the new Student Ice Center, many things have changed, most notably the fans. Well, I think you had to be more dedicated to be a fan in D Stadium. And of course, that gave us quite a few wins over the years. Every, every home rink was different, and there was a great advantage to that. So the, the schools in those days, or the teams in those days, had much brighter records at home than they did on the road because they was usually a goal down when they went into another rink to start with. And of course, with the modern arena, there's a great deal of similarity. And we went from, let's say, 18 or 1900 fans to 3200 fans. And uh, it became more of a, I think, a social event. You still had your nucleus of great hockey fans who had great enjoyment out of the game and were great followers. But then you had a lot of people that got seats because it was the thing to do. Now, we still have good fans, but they, you, it's not the crazy fans that you had in the old days. I can remember rubber boots being thrown on the rink and dead fish and rotten fish. And, you know, you could write a book what happened down in D Stadium, which everything, at the new rink, it's almost the same game in and game out. There is one important thing that will not be the same, though, next season. John McInnes will not be coaching the Hockey Huskies. Some say tech hockey will never be the same. Former All-American and current Marquette High coach, Jerry Sullivan. It's always going to be tech, and I think you're going to have the fans there behind them, the, the band, the hometown people, and I think, um, I think the act that's going to follow will probably be very close to, hopefully, to John. Well, you know, you, you can't replace the individual, and I think that was the, the one particular item, is, is John, you know. Uh, his alumni, his graduates, you know, were very close to him, very close to him. And you'd never be able to replace that. Uh, uh, you know, myself or the successor, whoever it may be, should be able to converse with those people and carry on a tradition. But it will not be the same thing. Well, that's a, that's a tough question. Uh, I'd like to think that if uh, whoever succeeds him, uh, if it stays within the family, in other words, uh, Jim Nargang or Herb Boxer or whoever else uh, might uh, end up being the coach, um, I don't think it'll change that much because I pretty much he had the same effect on all of us, uh, making us mature, uh, like you said before, being uh, more on the conservative side as far as uh, being a gentleman and that. I don't think the overall attitude as far as hockey will change too much. Uh, obviously, the dominant force of her of his personality is, is, is going to be missing, but I think overall that... Um, we should be all right. It's going to be a tough act to follow, obviously, but his, uh, you know, his shadow will always be there, and I think it's going to be for the benefit of everybody. John's leaving uh, signifies the, the end of, of an era. Uh, 
I think that, uh, that the people who have always supported tech hockey uh, will always support tech hockey as long as it's maintained at the standard that John has set. And I, certainly uh, things will never be the same because I, uh, you know, the person that takes over will not be a John McInnes. He will be uh, the person that he is, and I think that uh, if he puts any extra pressure on himself to fill those footsteps, then he will be starting off uh, in a hole to begin with. It'll be different in that I won't be behind the bench and I was there for 26 years. But that's the only comparison. Um, I think that uh, you have to look to the young man that's going to come in here and uh, get behind him. He's going to have some great new ideas and uh, I don't think they'll flip-flop the program completely. But we need some new ideas coming in. And we're coming into enough, a uh, completely different era. Uh, I was very fortunate that Funding was there when I was a hockey coach. Funding is going to be tough in the next two, 10 years for all athletics. And I'm not talking about the University of Michigan or Michigan State, but all college athletics are going to have a tough time. History will show John McInnes' last team finished this season with a mark of 23 wins, 14 losses, and three ties. But the idea of losing him as coach is very heartbreaking for some. Freshman Mike Neppy. Yeah, it is. I, I really like John McGinnis as a coach. I mean, I, I'm going to miss him. I've, I've only been here one year, and already I've, I've uh, you know, it's, I'm hurt because he's gone in one year. That's something else. Now, as far as next season, is it going to be hard to watch from the stands instead of from behind the bench? I don't really think so. I, uh, I'm going through something uh, in coaching that I had to go through with cigarette smoking. For 25 years, I was on the cigarettes and I was going to quit every six months and was going to quit every week and when I finally did quit I walked away with it and had no qualms because I was mentally ready to do it and I think this is true of hockey I'm mentally ready to do it now and uh, during every season I was going to quit you know that was just to bolster me to continue on I think and uh, uh, so I'm at a point where I'm perfectly satisfied. I hope to become a good fan, and I hope to be able to spend uh, some more time with my grandchildren and, uh, uh, and certainly with my wife and be able to do a little bit of traveling. And um, They've put up uh, with an awful lot for me through the years, and I wouldn't be here if it hadn't have been for them. Carpentry, I love to do that, and uh, I like music. Just about every kind. I'm not an opera lover, but... I enjoy uh, most every kind of music. Uh, hard rock and opera I can leave alone, but the rest I enjoy. Jazz is my favorite. The head coaching job at Tech now belongs to Jim Nargang. The school made that announcement yesterday, and he has the task of replacing a legend. It will not be easy for Nargang, a four-year assistant coach who was captain and All-American at Tech in 1974. Replacing someone like John McInnes is like following Oklahoma or South Pacific on Broadway. But he does fit the only request John had for his successor. Nargang is part of the Tech family, the family that John McInnes started back in 1956. I'm Steve Violetta. Good night. John McGinnis, a hockey legend, has been brought to you in part by the Merchants and Miners Bank of Calumet. These local Seiko dealers and these Armstrong ceiling dealers. <laughs>